In today's video, we're going to be talking about email phishing. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to spoof or set the value of the sender email so that when it's delivered, it's delivered in the inbox of the target and it appears like it is sent from any email that you want. I'm also going to show you how easy it is to protect yourself and protect your organization from such attacks. This is Aid from Z Security, and if you're interested in hacking or cybersecurity, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so you get notified every time we publish an educational video like this one. If you're already a subscriber, then show us some love by liking the video and sharing it with friends. Now, email phishing can be used in so many scenarios. So you can social engineer the target into downloading and executing a specific file or malware. You can get them to click a link and go to another phishing page that will steal their username and password. You can get them to go to a page, a malicious page with evil code that will hook their browser and allow you to execute further attacks. So the possibilities of this are endless. There are a number of ways to set the sender of an email or spoof emails. The easiest is to use online free websites. The only problem with this is that the email is going to land in the spam or in the junk folder. So it's highly unlikely that the target is going to actually even see your email. Even if they do, they're not going to interact with it. The other two methods are better. So you can use email marketing services. The only problem with this is that most of these services require a lot of verification. And the third method is to use a web hosting plan with email access, which requires coding. I cover these methods in details in my courses, step by step. And for this method, the third one, I actually share my own code with you so that if you don't know coding, you can do it without having to know how to code. But in this lecture, we're actually going to be covering this method and we're going to use AI or ChatGPT to actually give us the required code. So you're still not going to need any coding knowledge to do this. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is sign up with a web hosting plan that gives us email access. So I'm going to be using this provider, DreamHost. I'm not sponsored by them. You can choose any web hosting provider other than this as they allow you to use their mail servers because all we want to do is send fake emails. And to do that, we need the mail servers. So I've already signed up to this. I'm not going to show you how to do it because it is very, very simple. And once you sign up, you're going to be able to access your dashboard in here. And I'm simply going to go to websites and manage websites to be able to manage the website that this web hosting allows me to use. I'm going to click on files to access the files hosted on this website. You're going to get a nice web based file manager. And usually on other web hosting services, you'd want to navigate to a file called public HTML or HTML, or you might already find yourself inside it. In this case, we're not inside it. We actually need to go to the directory where our web root is, which is the directory that contains the files that the website can access that users of the website can see. So in here, we want to create a new file and this file is going to contain code that will allow us to send fake emails. Now, because this is a website and this web server understands PHP, we need to write this code in PHP. And in my courses, I've actually wrote this code myself and I've created a nice web interface for it, but we don't have time for all of this in here. Therefore, we're actually going to use ChatGPT to create a simple PHP script that allow us to send emails. So I'm simply going to ask it to give me PHP code that allows me to send emails. And perfect. As you can see, it starts typing straight away. And as you can see, the code is already very, very simple. So we can see, even though it hasn't finished yet, that we can set the to, which is the recipient email. We can set the subject and we can set the message. Now, we actually want to send the from because the whole point of sending a spoofed email to set the from value to whatever we want. So I'm going to ask it, can you modify the code above to allow me to set the sender email and name? And that's great. It's saying that it can do that for us. So let's have a look on the new version of the code so we can set the receiver. We can set the subject, we can set the message, and we can set the sender email, and we can set the sender name. Perfect. This is exactly what I want. 
And you'll see once it's finished writing the code for me, it'll actually give us instructions on how to use this code. But as you can see, using the code is actually very, very self-explanatory. So I'm not even gonna bother reading how to use it. We're simply gonna copy the code. We're gonna go to our file manager. We're gonna create a new file. So I'm gonna click on the plus and click on new file. And let's call it send.php. Remember, this is PHP code being executed on a web server that understands PHP. That's why we're doing everything in PHP. So we're gonna click OK to create this file. It's gonna automatically take me to a web-based text editor that will allow me to modify or add code to this file. We've already copied the code, so I'm just gonna paste it in here. And we're gonna set the desired values. So the first thing that we wanna set is the two. This is the receiver email. And I'm gonna set it to my own email because I'm just testing this. So I'm gonna do zaid at zsecurity.org. The subject, I'm simply gonna set the subject to test. So we're just gonna leave it like this. And the message, we're just gonna set it to, this is another email spoofing test. In a real life scenario, you wanna put the message body in here. So this is usually the most important part of the social engineering attack. This is where you're gonna ask the user to go ahead and do something, whether they're gonna go ahead and navigate to a certain website or download a file or make a phone call or send the code. It really depends on the scenario, but this attack is obviously very, very useful in so many scenarios. Next, we're gonna be setting the sender email and name. So the sender email, and in here, this is again very, very important, and it depends on your attack. So this should be an email of a person that the target regularly interacts with. So this should be a friend or a colleague or a company that they deal with usually. I'm gonna set it to adrian at zsecurity.org. This is an email of a friend and a colleague that actually work with us in the company. I regularly communicate with him. Therefore, the chances of this email landing in my inbox and not in the spam are very, very high. The sender name, again, we're gonna put the name of the person. So in my case, it's Adrian Bud. And that's it, now everything is set. So now again, this is just a PHP file. So we need to actually save these values in the file before we execute it. So we're gonna click on save to save the file and we're gonna close the file. And next, we're simply gonna need to navigate to this file in order to execute it. So this is the website that we just created. We can navigate to it by simply accessing this URL. And we're gonna put the file name, which is send.php. And perfect, as you can see, it's telling us that the email is sent successfully. So let's go to the inbox, let's see if it looks identical to the real one and let's see if it actually get delivered into our inbox. Right here, I have my inbox and as you can see, the here, the bottom one is an actual email that I got from Adrian. This is a real email from Adrian. You can see the name here, correct? Similar to the name here. If I stay hovering on the real email, as you can see, I'll get a card that shows his name, uh, his email and his phone number. And if I hover over the spoofed one, again, I get the exact same card because it's pulling this from my contacts. So it's automatically populating this. If I go on the real email right here, again, you can see this is a real email by him. You see the name, you see the profile, and you see the from is from Adrian Bud. Now let's go to the spoofed one. Again, you have the picture, you have the name, and if we look in here, you have the correct email, adrianbud at zsecurity.org. The only part that might look a little bit suspicious is the fact that it's saying via this. But a lot of people are not gonna pay attention to this, and this is only displayed in Gmail. So we tested with live, this doesn't even show up on it, and even with Gmail, we have the correct profile picture, we have the correct name, we have the correct email, if you look in here, and we even have the correct phone number. Again, like I said, you can use any web hosting provider. You do not have to use this one that I used. You can try the free ones, you can try the paid ones, and like I said, you will get better results with the paid ones. The steps are pretty much the same. The only difference might be the signup process and the process of uploading the file to the website. But the idea is the same. You sign up with a web hosting provider, you upload the send.php file, you browse the .php file from your web browser, and you use it to send the email.
Now, it is very important to note that this will only work if the domain that you are spoofing or setting the sender to does not implement proper email authentication. With that being said, many statistics suggest that over 80% of organizations around the world do not implement proper email authentication and therefore you'd be able to impersonate these organizations and send emails and make them appear as if they're sent from these organizations. Now to check if a domain can be spoofed, you can easily go to this website right here. I'll include its link in the description and all you have to do is put the domain that you want to spoof or impersonate in here. So for example, if we put zsecurity.org, which is our company domain, you'll see that we have no DMARC records. It's telling us that nothing is detected and therefore we can actually send emails and make them appear like they're sent from any email at zsecurity.org. And we did that on purpose to show you in this lecture. So this is very, very dangerous. And if you own or manage a domain that is not implementing this properly, then you should really fix this because this means that hackers can spoof emails and make them seem as if they're sent from your domain or your organization. To do this, you'll need to properly configure three DNS records. These records are the DMARC, the SPF, and the DKIM record. Let me know if you actually want me to cover how to do this manually. I can dedicate a full video in the future to show you how to set this up manually. Alternatively, if you manage a large organization or company, then it might make more sense to use a managed solution like EasyDMARC, which is the sponsor of this video. EasyDMARC is an all-in-one email management solution which automates the whole process, making setting up these records properly very, very easy. Testing and further investigation is also very easy with EasyDMARC, so you can check if you configured these records and policies properly to make sure that only malicious emails are being blocked and the actual valid emails that your organization is sending are not being blocked and are actually being forwarded to the correct destination. Remember, I said 80% of organizations do not implement these records properly. So many of them do actually implement these records, but they don't configure them properly, leaving them vulnerable to phishing attacks. EasyDMARC also gives us amazing visibility and analytics to see exactly how our email domains are being used around the world. So you'll be able to see how many emails were and were not compliant, the threats or spoofing attempts and so much more. Use the links in the description to sign up or to book a call with a security engineer from EasyDMARC.